Welcome again. Right now we're at Acts chapter 8, verses 9 through 24. We're going to be talking about Simon the ex-sorcerer. There are a lot of little gold nuggets we can get out of this portion. It is going to be awesome. But there was a certain man, Simon by name, who used to practice sorcery in the city and amazed the people of Samaria, making himself out to be some great one, to whom they all listened, from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is that great power of God. They listened to him because for a long time he had amazed them with his sorceries. But when they believed Philip preaching the good news concerning God's kingdom and the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Simon himself also believed being baptized. He continued with Philip. Seeing signs and great miracles occurring, he was amazed. Now, when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, who, when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had fallen on none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of Christ Jesus. There are some people that believe that if you receive Jesus as your Savior, and of course, if you're baptized, then you have the Holy Spirit. In fact, I've had a church leader tell me that personally. You know, all you got to do is just come to Jesus, you know, and just receive him as your Lord and Savior and get baptized and you have the Holy Spirit. You have all of the Holy Spirit you can ever get, okay? Not according to the scripture. You can believe that Yeshua is the Messiah. You can get baptized and still not have the Holy Spirit. You see, this church leader that told me that was the guy that said, well, you know, you, you can't really come to Jesus and accept him as Lord and Savior without the Holy Spirit. It's, just, it's the Holy Spirit that draws you to Jesus. It's the Holy Spirit that leads you to get saved. So therefore, you have the Holy Spirit. Therefore, the Holy Spirit's in you already. You know, of course, that is false. And this proves it. These people did not have the Holy Spirit, yet they believed in Jesus, yet they were baptized. Verse 17, then they laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Now, when Simon saw that the Holy Spirit was given through the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money, saying, give me also this power that whomever I may lay my hands on may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, may your silver perish with you because you thought you could obtain the gift of God with money. You have neither part nor lot in this matter, for your heart isn't right before God. Your heart isn't right before God. Now, don't forget, Simon believed, it says, and he was baptized. It is possible to believe and be baptized and still not be right with God and still perish in your sins and go to hell, okay? This is proof of that, okay? Peter was very strict with him. He said, may your silver, may your money perish with you. Peter proved that Simon did not have salvation. You see, now salvation is whoever who truly believes in the Lord will not perish but have everlasting life. Peter said to Simon, may your money perish with you. In other words, you are about to perish and your money. In spite of the fact that you believed and in spite of the fact that you were baptized, you are on your way to judgment and hell. You are on your way to death. Your heart isn't right before God. Repent, therefore, of this, your wickedness, and ask God if perhaps, if perhaps, the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. Notice this, Peter is not like how these preachers are today. Well, you know, repent and, you know, ask God to forgive you and he will forgive you. He understands. That's not what Peter said to Simon. No, no, no. I mean, this is, quote unquote, New Testament Christianity. This is Book of Acts type Christianity, okay? Repent and ask God to forgive you, perhaps, if, maybe, if, if perhaps he may forgive you of this, your wickedness. Very serious. This is very serious. 
Once again, verse 22, repent therefore of this, your wickedness, and ask God if, if, perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are in the poison of bitterness and in the bondage of iniquity. Like, wow, Peter really nailed it here, okay? Peter really laid it down. And there's no none of this love preaching. I mean, doesn't that just make you sick? I mean, it would make Peter sick, obviously, here. Peter didn't preach like that. He called out sin for what it is, and he condemned people, okay? He condemned people. He warned them strictly. Perhaps you might be forgiven. Perhaps you might get to heaven if you beg God, if perhaps. Simon answered, pray for me to the Lord that none of the things which you have spoken happen to me. See, Simon understood that the things that Peter spoke to him was serious. Spiritual death on the way to hell, perishing. Not everlasting life, perishing. Wow. I mean, where are the OSAS once saved, always saved Christians here? Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's obvious here. You have to walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. If you don't have the fear of God, don't expect to see heaven. I don't, I mean, I'm just being honest with you. If you don't have the fear of God, according to the scriptures, you haven't even begun. You haven't even taken the first step toward wisdom because it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Seek him while he may be found. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things if you call upon him in truth. Love you guys.